Good morning everybody and welcome back to Wilderness Farm. I got up at 3.55, which is unheard of, to come and see the sunrise today. It is the day after the hottest day ever and I thought I'd come and see what it looks like. But check this out. I mean, we're going to mow it because this is going to be the lawn area. But look how much ragwort is just dominating. I've also cut the initial path with the lawn mower. So that we got our way through the rewilding area because it's already changed quite a lot. Promise you'll be here tomorrow. Now I think from the tree here the sun will rise from over there, but we'll have to see what we can see. It's definitely a very different call in the morning. I'm sure we will do many sunrises. At Wilderness Farm, and this is just the first one. Our love's not in the it's past the frame and through the glass. You know, behind the walls, beneath the grass. Well, you never know what you've got until you look back at it, but this wasn't the sunrise I was imagining. After the hottest day of the year, it's actually pretty chilly. What I am realising, I think it's time that we make sure I'm going to pick up some of these beautiful pine cones. I've been told by Alexia that these are incredibly valuable to florists. And these pine cones are what this tree and this land are already offering us to forage. Don't even have to pick them off the tree, they're just ready for me. And they are all the same, yet so, so different. As people have been coming, we've been offering them to take one home with them. We're going to leave some on the ground. But I think I want to make sure that we don't miss what the land is already giving us easily. Good morning, matey. Oh, hello, guys. You're on the run, aren't you? Off they go. Welcome to the Wilderness Pack. There's only four or five of them this morning. I'm only kind of picking up the ones that are still quite fresh compared to these greyed out ones that have been here for a while. We've got about 50 nice pine cones there. But it's interesting thinking about the value. If we sell those to a florist, it's going to be a pound a go. Might be a year or two till we get the next crops down. I mean, look, they're f the leaves are full of them, but it might take a while till they drop. Maybe we only get a crop of 50 pine cones a year. 50 quid doesn't really make a dent on the costs of running this place. But 50 people all taking home a gift, a connection to Wilderness Farm in the same way that we did when we first arrived here, or visited here in fact. It's worth a lot more than just 50 quid. I can tell you that for free. I did a little drawing a couple of nights ago, which I'll bring up on screen, to try and show what I'm thinking about the use of this final field. It's trees on this side. Trees behind and trees there, but we've only got 20 metres or so. I'm thinking of turning this into a food forest with a campfire in the middle. We've carved out a little bit of a track that would take you from this tree to that tree, which is the corner, and also keep the view. It'd be amazing to be able to sit around a campfire with a mature forest of a thousand new trees planted, 200 different species and nuts and fruit in abundance. Let's bring the electric quad and the trailer up here and come grab everything back. In the wilder part of the land, I want to be able to forage, not just farm. Let's see if I can turn the coffee machine on. This is our solar mess at the moment. Pulled in the two panels, Andy's released them from the woods. We've got a few different inverter things going on, but I'm going to try and get this 500 watt one going. We're going to get some wind to complement the sun as well. But I just want to see if I can get the stable block running so I can try and make a coffee. Which is this socket here. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Nope. No luck with the coffee today, but we bought a socket wrench set so that I can fix the tractor. Basically, something happened when I was driving this the other day. The steering column doesn't seem to engage. I'm not sure that this is going to work. I do like the idea that we can fix these things ourselves, so I'm going to give it a go.
I think that is bent, and I think that's the problem. It still seems to move. Let's see what they say. I'm not going to lie, I'm finding it a little bit difficult today. A bit, like, overwhelming, I guess. The thing is, the woods was 25 acres and this is 10. But there was nothing to manage or maintain. There was nothing to do. It was all about being. And the challenge with this farm is it's a bit about doing and a bit about being. And I'm still trying to get the basic tools off the ground. I'm trying to get, you know, I can't make a coffee. I'm trying to get the solar working. I can't figure out what Andy's done there. The tractor's broken, I'm getting oily hands. And I haven't given in to farm life yet, so I'm still trying to go to London this evening for dinner. And so getting oily feels inconvenient, let's say. It feels inconvenient in ways that I haven't sort of acclimatised yet. There's no order, there's no management system, there's no monthly and weekly tasks, there's no rhythm at all. There is, however, a couple of bloody lovely roses, and I'll show you those, because if you can't stop and smell the roses, we've got something going wrong. If you walk to hell, a huge moment for me, actually, it was this week on Instagram, getting our first solid offer to come and help at the farm. So that makes a massive difference. So thank you, Samuel. Helicopter engineer, but pretty handy with most things. People like you, Samuel, that make me feel like, whew, okay, we might get there in the end. Because this is more than just a one or two person thing. So thank you very much. I look forward to having you here in a few weeks' time. I've just seen that where the sun is coming up. I got it really wrong. I thought it was kind of coming up over there. But that must be dead south. So I'll show you quickly now that there actually is some sun. I haven't been up this early ever. It's still like seven o'clock. I still can't even go to the shop to get my new bit for the tractor. It's amazing what the drone shows you. I had no idea there was water just over the fence here. That's very interesting though. You know we don't have to the it's turned into a beautiful day. This rubble that I took out of the field the other day. I'm gonna try and sort it out and try and build a little barbecue so we can have some people around for Friday night dinners, but Sort it out and see how much I've got of it in here, really. That's basically what I pulled out of the field. And do you think there's enough there to build up a barbecue? Probably only needs to be one or two bricks wide. Kind of half a metre deep. I think there might just be enough there, but I wonder if I can... almost need to, like, create a cast and put all the rocks in and then pour the cement over the top to gel it all in together. I wonder if I can create like a wooden cast for a barbecue <laughs> and then we could make barbecues out of rubble. That's what it's meant to look like. It's meant to look like that. And I... <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. That'll do it. That'll do it. Okay. That'll do it. Good man. He gave it to me free. I think it's part of the warranty and he just said just don't do it again. <laughs> All right, let's try and get this bad boy back on. Okay, this might be my first mechanical fix, but I'm going to tell you this straight up. It took me half an hour to push this from the field where I broke down. Took me an hour to go to the shop. Took me a week to sort of send the video and get the response to tell me to come to the shop. And it's taken me another 40 minutes with oily hands to take the piece off and put the new piece on. I've got a newfound respect for mechanics, for people like Josh Ovenden, people who get down and work with metal. It's not as enjoyable as working with wood. And it's certainly not as easy as working with the internet. If you work with metal, if you work with machines, new respect for you. And I don't even know if it works out. Let's see. We got some steering. Where you are. Where you are. Where you are. Where you are. 
could all fall apart. We could fall asleep in the way. I can tell you I've almost definitely done it the wrong way. Almost definitely using the wrong equipment. But to have fixed the steering myself and then to have mowed my first field feels bloody excellent. So chuffed. And this is a much more appropriate size. That took about half an hour compared to the field that I started on the other day. Although we're going to have to have another go at it. But old Westie's back in action. And the steering column seems to have worked with the spacers. It's just clearing the tyre. So many more adventures to come. We are just building this creative rhythm here at Wilderness Farm. Can't wait to see more of you down here. Let me know what you would love to see here. If somebody was telling me about yellow rattle that we should be sowing in the autumn that will suppress some of the really strong grasses to give some room for other grasses and wildflowers to grow. What do you know about biodiversity and how we can enhance it? I'm talking to a bee man. We're thinking vineyard, we're thinking market garden and we're thinking models that can replicate and scale. So many things to talk about. Can't wait to see you. Next Thursday, 9 p.m., stick it in your diary, get ready. The Wilderness Farm vlogs are on their way. Take it easy. <laughs>